Testing, testing, testing. JB here, JB here. Let me see if I can get this off. September 17th, 2021. Hope everybody's having a great afternoon. Friday, it's another kind of um, choppy session. Started a week, had kind of some pullbacks. Then we had that big rally Wednesday. <clears throat> a little consolidation yesterday, and then we're back to selling today. So markets, the S&P is now down for the week. Um, again, we're right near all-time highs, so it's, it's kind of hard to to make this uh, big bear case, but I guess when you start looking at all these other data points that people are starting to point out, uh, maybe it's easy, right? Um, you know, I, I think it was on the watch list last week in, in regards to margin debt for the first time since, I don't know if it was 2011, um, margin debt as a, as a whole uh, went down. And typically, you know, people use that as a, a bearish case because when everybody's levered to, you know, to the gills, you would think, oh, if any kind of sell, Sell-off is going to have margin calls. People going to have to. It's going to exacerbate the selling. Um, but to me, when you have these uh, huge margin debt numbers, it, it's a function of the market going up, right? So when your portfolio goes from a thousand, you know, ten thousand to fifty or a hundred, whatever it is, then of course your debt's going to go up, and you're going to probably utilize that. So of course, as a function of the market going up, your margin debt's going to go up. But needless to say. Uh, we'll have to see next week. We have the Fed meeting on Wednesday, 2 o'clock statement, 2.30 uh, press conference um, after Jackson Hole. I mean, what can Powell say besides kind of out outlining uh, more of a, a detailed, um, you know, a, a picture of how the Fed's going to start to scale back their uh, their purchase, the purchases of, of bonds and, um, and keep rates at the same. Um, let's see here. Someone's on the, someone's on the video. Still here. I saw you, whoever that was. Funny story. But <laughs> I don't know if it was three or four years ago. We used to have a different chat program. No, it probably was five years ago. And I came on the audio um, at like maybe it was 8 o'clock, 8.30. And someone just had like their coffee. They had their robe on. And it looked like they had just rolled out of bed. And they didn't realize they were on the video. And uh, wow. Anyway, story for another day. All right, so so that's kind of about what's going to happen next week. We'll see. The S and P held kind of held that that fifty day. I wouldn't say it held because it broke below, but that's kind of a spot I was I was possibly looking for some some possible you know M A puts Visa puts. Those stocks already sold off today, so that's a little tough. Uh, take a look at Google today, and oh, I don't know for I'm trying to think of the last time Google sold off for no other reason than just you know the, the market sold off. Um, I don't know if it was February March. Uh, but, but take a look at today, it just hit new lows here, 28.14. But then you go look to try and find some risk reward uh, put hedges, and it's insanity. I think that I was looking before the 2780s were just out of control. So the stock's at, it's at uh, 28, 28.15 with two hours and, uh, well, no, an hour and 40 minutes left in the day, and the $2,800 calls are, are, are 260. So tough to kind of fathom the risk reward in, in regards to playing out as a put head so I'll probably just sit on the sidelines but anyway so that's that let me talk about Calivo um, I think it was Jake brought it up uh, yesterday company reported horrible earnings on the 15th then they appointed a uh, an Am Amazon executive as their CFO they still have an interim uh, CEO and the CEO was actually is still acting as the CEO and the CFO um, but, you know, here's a name. You take a look at the trends in regards to, uh, you know, things that are hot. You know, avocado toast and avocados as a, a you know, treatment for your skin or whatever it is. Um, back when I had a bull case on, on Calivo, those were kind of the themes that were, that were playing out. So I, I don't think those have disappeared. I mean, people still have brunch and have avocado toast. People still use avocado as a, as a skin treatment. And there's still a huge demand for avocado. Um, but with COVID, supply issues, logistical issues. There's been some concerns in, in regards to supply and then uh, pricing issues. Um, and then reported their earnings. They kind of, uh, they tempered back their guidance. I, actually, I don't even think they hit, they issued guidance because of the uncertainty. So the stock is way off its highs. Um, back when I was a big bull on Calavo, I think it was 60 bucks, went all the way up to 90. It used to have like a 30% short interest, which it doesn't anymore. It's like two and a half percent. But I think it offers a nice uh, opportunity. Take a look at the chart, huge pincher. Um, take a look at the fundamentals, trades less than one times revenue, $650 million market cap, $1 billion in sales. So it's definitely interesting. 
and then kind of the wild card or the thing that I think um, probably adds more credibility to this move is the CEO or the interim CEO, CFO, went and bought uh, shares on the open market on, uh, on the 14th. So uh, to me, you know, everybody always talks, oh, insider selling, insider selling. Insider selling to me is, I wouldn't call it a, a moot point or, you know, to totally disregard. But um, most of those selling, uh, share seller sales that happen with insiders typically happen with uh, folks who are, uh, they have a planned program, right? Uh, you know, they set it up with their financial advisor and they have uh, planned sales, right? Third, whatever that's, 10, 13, B, 5, or whatever that's called. Um, when you have an insider buy, it's a totally different story. Here's, you know, I think he bought 5,500 shares at $36. So, you know, $200,000 share purchase. Um, to me, that 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 speaks more volumes than any kind of insider sale that might happen. So um, we'll have to see how this all plays out. I went and got those uh, 55 strikes into October. Let's see what those are now. Did I get them at 50 or 40? Did I get them at 40? Ba -ba. Yeah, I got them at 40. So they're 60 by 70 now. Um, and I could swear that the instant I, I hit the button to, to post my entry, Someone, someone gobbles up the contracts. It's crazy. Someone has a bot, but uh, you know, I think it's a great risk reward uh, in regards. To plenty of time on the October expiration. You take a look at the market selling off today, and despite that, uh, Calivo is still up over ten, well, ten percent right now. So um, you know, I think in mid forties, possibly fifty uh, in the coming weeks. So I'll continue to hold those and probably lock some in to cover costs when it gets uh, to a double, which hey, might might do before the close today. So that's CVGW. Uh, also got some joint uh, October strikes. Again, I hit the button. Not more than a second later, someone else grabbed the 130s. Um, so it kind of makes it tough when I know I, I'm going to enter and someone else is going to uh, grab it up and it's you know it's not really a fair game. But uh, needless to say, uh, I was supposed to have a piece out two weeks ago. I just, you know, time constraints over the weekend has been tough, but I, I'm going to try and do this uh, this big piece on joint over the weekend, so you can kind of understand my, my bull case on, on the name. I mean, here's a company that, that you would think would have a huge uh, headwind with COVID, and, and despite COVID, and they have an office where you have, uh, you know, chiro, chiropractors have to actually touch people and uh, be in close contact, and they still beat revenues year over year despite COVID. It's just, it's pretty remarkable. So you have to think as, uh, you know, COVID starts to head to the sidelines, you know, hopefully, that they're just going to continue to, to destroy numbers. They're going to um, scale up their opening of locations. They're going to probably acquire some mom and pop locations. And at some point, once they hit that thousand uh, location uh, level, that their their goal, at least for 2023, which probably is going to happen in 2022, uh, I mean, the stock's going to be 250, 300 bucks. So kind of the thought process there. I'll continue to look for opportunities to play uh, uh, the joint, uh, intercept, Still have a couple of my 15 strikes. I, you know, huge. The short interest went up since the last time I, I added the calls. I'm going to close some of my 15s and probably add the uh, yeah, triple again. Probably add some some October 20s. They were 50 cents before, and I almost um, added some, and then I passed. Uh, uh, 40 by 55. So sometime before the end of the day, I'll probably get some of the uh, 20 strikes October on intercept. A lot of buzz and chatter. I wouldn't say a lot of buzz or chatter, but these uh, pump and dumps, and that's all I can call them, some of these names that just get an incessant bid because people think it's the next short squeeze, the next uh, Wall Street bets name. Um, Intercept is, is it starts to gain a little bit of the attention from this 30% short interest. Um, again, similar to Calivo, and I'm, I mean, obviously it's a biotech company, but it, it trades, let, it's like, I think it's 1.2. Let's see if I can pull it up. Is one and a half times revenues. Yeah, so the company is five, it's a $500 million company. It does $341 million in sales. I'm not saying that right off the bat that warrants a higher valuation, but considering where it's been, I mean, it was 35 bucks in February. It was um, 40 bucks right at the end of last year. So it's more than cut in half. It has a 27% short interest. I think that's 30% now. Um, insiders bought the stock at 20 bucks, and I think that was back in May or June. So... Um, you know, who knows? It's been sitting here at this 15 handle, broke over 50, 50 day moving average for the first time since July. Um, today, couldn't hold it, faded back. 
but maybe it starts to get some some mojo. And it's one of those names, option expiration today. Monday, we'll probably see some of these names that I'm bullish on that my options expire go bonkers. I'm, I'm hoping it goes bonkers and I add some calls today. Um, so when it goes bonkers Monday or Tuesday, I can take advantage, but certainly not going to uh, jump the uh, jump the gun. What else do we have? <clears throat> oh, look at, the, yeah, so I already talked about Google. Some of these, uh, the FANG stocks getting getting a little bit uh, of selling pressure today. Facebook off uh, nearly 2.5%. Of course, you had Google. Take a look at Netflix is kind of hanging in there. Um, whether it's uh, FTC concerns or, you know, these pieces around, I, I think there was a piece on Facebook saying that they cater to the highly influential posters and they let their content slide where other folks who may post the same exact content, they'll get deleted or banned. Um, who knows if that's some of the pressure, but um, again, st market's right near all-time high. So to see some of the selling is not uh, unexpected. Just, you know, we were down six of the past se seven sessions. I think that was on Tuesday into Wednesday. Finally, uh, you know, found a bid. Just hope we don't break that 50-day moving average. Um, I think that's it. Have a great weekend. I'll try and uh, get that the joint piece over the weekend. I'll post it and I'll share it. Hope everyone has a great weekend. Rock and roll.